So this video follows on from the earlier video about starting at risk in the virtual lab uh, where we uploaded this file. And so this particular video now will talk about how to execute simulations and save results from a simulation. And we also look at uh, some additional capabilities of at risk. Uh, so we have the file uploaded here. And so to set up at risk, we'll have to um, define uh, where those uncertainties are and which output we want to read. So the output of that we are interested in is the duration of the project. And so we select the duration of the project in the first line here and click on add output and say, okay. And so you see in the formula field here, it's a risk output plus 27. And so, so that has identified that this particular cell is uh, the output. And then we'll have to define distributions for each of these uh, cells here. And so uh, to keep things simple here, I'm going to just uh, define simple uh, part distribution for each of these, actually beta distribution, which uh, for the purpose here, uh, for the part analysis, uh, is identified in at risk as a part distribution. So let me select this uh, first cell. I'll click on define distribution. And you see the there is a beta general which requires actually let me select that um, four parameters to define but at this point we are not going to be using that one uh, we'll actually use um, the the beta distribution which is defined for part purposes so let me cancel this one and go back to and so that one defined is defined as part and so we'll part, we we'll click double click on that. And so we have the part distribution. And so for the purpose of this demo, I'll just pick up numbers. Um, so let's just take this and make this, let's say one, and let's make this seven. And say okay. And so we'll follow the same thing with other activities. Double click here and let's assume this was one and five. Okay. Oh, let's um, skip out of this. Define distributions. Work again. In this case, we'll call it three and nine. Okay. Find distributions again. Perk. You notice uh, in the formula bar that uh, this at risk is noting down the distributions we are defining using the parameters in their format. Um, let's uh, make some of these little different. So I'll go on this one and a right skew. skew. Okay, so we have um, the data entered, and once you have all the data entered and output defined, I move the cell, uh, the cursor back to, or uh, select the, the duration cell again, 
don't have to, but uh, it helps to just see the distribution of the duration as you run the simulations. So for running my simulation, we can simply go and click on start simulation. Uh, but that takes the default setting of running 100 iterations of one simulation. Uh, and it's generally recommended to run 1000 simulation, uh, simulations, run iterations for um, you getting some stable uh, output data. Uh, and so once I've done that, I click on start simulation and starts running. And so as it's running those runs, it's building up the histogram of each value, how often that value was realized. And so here is uh, the output. And so let's say here, if we were interested in figuring out what's the probability of uh, achieving a duration of 32 days. And so I'll move these sliders. So I'll select this and move it. And so we get to, oops, but sometimes, yeah, there. So we got 32 days here. Now this is really the probability of 92.3 is actually sh showing us the probability of a duration between 23.67 and 32.0. And so we really want any time 32 and under. So we move this to the minimum where we start seeing zero on the other side. And, and, and so the minimum duration is you know, 19.4, anything below the, this minimum number here. And so now it's showing us what's the probability of achieving a 32 day duration, which in this case is 97.3. Uh, you can also look at, of course, scrolling this bar down, uh, probabilities for different uh, durations and what these are in five percent steps so if we really wanted 32 is nowhere it's really hitting exactly 32 tells us 31 is 31.4 is 95 percent 33 is 99 percent but to find exact 32 days a probability corresponding to exact 32 days uh, we move these sliders around so so that's how you uh, get this uh, execute iterations uh, and, and get the output there's a 90 percent confidence interval about the mean and so on which typically here we are looking more for the different probabilities that we would like to explore for different durations that we would like to commit uh, for a project other outputs that we can look into if we go into project so let me close this one. And look at uh, charts and reports, and we click on probabilistic GAN. And just take the default settings. And so this shows us uh, the possible durations for uh, different tasks. Uh, and, and so you see that red bar, so it's saying it can take that long. Uh, and so on. So, so the, the interesting thing in here is this critical index column. This tells us how often a certain activity was on the critical path. And so, uh, and you see some activities are really, uh, they're almost close to 100% of the time, but other activities, which probably are not on a normal critical path, but due to variability, sometimes they uh, become that path path becomes longer than the critical path and making that particular path the critical path and then that they get on the critical path for that those small number of times so that's how uh, you look at critical index uh, you can also get this information um, from risk uh, help and so if i go to help and open documentation, help. And so here, if I go and search for critical index, hit return. And so you see right here, um, it's giving you multiple options or multiple places where critical index is discussed. Um, so here it's saying, and really, if you just directing you to probabilistic GAN chart and from probabilistic GAN chart how you can go and look at critical index and so the other part, other uh, 
discussions of that get into more detail about the critical index. Uh, so, so that's one uh, thing of interest. Uh, other items to look at would be tornado charts. So if I go click on, and that's right here on the menu bar. So we click on that. And within tornado charts, we have um, multiple options. So the one which uh, I find interesting, actually all of them are really interesting, but uh, the contribution to variance tells you uh, for each activity, how much are they contributing to the variance in the output, uh, the duration of, of the project. And, and so in this case, you can see the activity which is making largest contribution to the variance in the project duration is activity H and next is F and so on. So, so that also provides useful information. Uh, then one can focus on how to reduce, for example, variance of activity H so that you can reduce uh, the variability in the project duration. So, so those are some of the interesting features here. Uh, once you have run the reports, of course, you can save the file, or you should save the file. And so we say file, save as. Uh, you have no recent folders, okay, this PC. Uh, and so when we select that, it says, do you want to save at risk simulation results in graph? So we answer yes to that, because that would allow us to open the file at in with using at risk again to see the graphs without running the simulations over. And so we go ahead and say yes. And then we pick up our temporary files folder. And here we can say session eight simulation results. Hit save. And so that's saved. Now be, this being a virtual lab, as soon as you log out, your files get wiped out. And so before you log out, you should really download the files. And so for that, we go back to folder, uh, go back to our temporary files folder. Uh, okay, I think I click too many times. Maybe that first, well, okay. And so, oh, I see, when I was clicking, it was downloading those. So once I clicked here, it already downloaded the file uh, here. Uh, and so, so now you have downloaded the file, you wanna save it in a folder on your local computer. Uh, so right now, of course, it will be in our my downloaded uh, folder. And so, I, so now that it's in the local computer, it can be moved to the right folder later. But um, at this point, uh, this completes the demonstration of running at risk, looking at different charts, and um, and if needed at the help, and saving the result files for uh, use later. And so I'll stop this video here. So I'll of course close the folder, uh, and close the files, and I can end the session right from here, um, from the top. So from the virtual lab, if I can get the, my mouse to work correctly. Huh. There you go. Okay.